What about now? Did I fix that? Let's see. How big do is you our see delay? the little? Do you see the little bar moving? <laughs> uh, I think I got it. All right, yes. now we're yes, now we're on audio. Thanks, Josh. Uh, in the chat, <laughs> this is about. I, I don't think I've ever successfully run the uh, the the show correctly. So, all right, this is a random. That just means we're gonna have to do it more. Yeah, keep running running the operations. I've done it a, a good bit. It just <laughs> something <laughs> something goes wrong. <laughs> Well, hey, everybody, uh, yeah. uh, we are, uh, this is a, a informal, uh, we just decided to, you know, just a few minutes ago to, to do some streaming. Brad has got some work he wants to do. Uh, this is not going to be our official live coding happy hour show. Uh, that's still tomorrow. Um, we've got a plan for it and everything today. Uh, I'm Andrew Barnes. This is Brad Tilton. And what are you working on, Brad? Yeah, we're going to do a random one today. Uh, I published a GraphQL blog uh, on the developer blog today. So I've been doing a lot of random GraphQL, um, we'll say development and lots of GraphQL troubleshooting uh, to try to make my blog post work uh, the way I wanted it to. So we're going to do more GraphQL uh, here. And I'm going to create a GraphQL API for my cooking management app that we haven't we haven't really done anything with in a while, uh, but it's to manage uh, long cooks and recipes, and we have a thermometer integration and all sorts of things. So I was, ultimately, I was telling you just this week that we need to do some more cooking. Uh, yeah. Well, I need to do more actual cooking, smoking. <laughs> yeah, I haven't done that any... brought up the cooking app in my mind. <laughs> yeah, I haven't done any long ones in a while either. So uh, we're going to do that. Feeling like that's going to be yeah. this weekend. Then I'm going to I'm mm. going to do some some this weekend. I got to I got to pick something. Got yeah, all your salmon talk has point. gotten me considering doing some salmon real quick. But then I think it's time for pork butt. Salmon is nice because it takes smoke really well, but it's a relatively short cook. So you still get to smoke something, yeah. but you only need a Yeah, but that's hours. just like dinner. I wanted to, yeah. I, I like the adventure of the day mm. of smoking. Yes, <laughs> that's what you're doing that day is you're going to sit out there, tend Honey, the fire. Honey, what are you doing today? I'm smoking this pork. That's right. <laughs> the kids can come out and help me if they want, but yeah. Uh, yeah, that's where I'm going to be. So, well, let's uh, let's get girl going with this GraphQL uh, API endpoint you're going to create. All right. right, let's do it. Let's do it. What is desktop three? It's this one. It's a, it's always an adventure. <laughs> All right, I think there we go. We have that mostly. That, that wow. one's mostly okay. All right. So I've got I've got my blog post up. I think I'm going to use this as a reference point. Uh, but if you go to developer.servicenow.com/blog.do, uh, this is my post that um, was published. You, you do need to slide it over some, Brad. Uh, I don't know what's going on, but you're, uh, yeah, you're like oh, grabbing yeah. a teeny part of the video. That is strange. Did you switch over to the desktop view in the scene? No. Let's see if that makes it. There's better. the video scene and then the desktop scene. I think it has. James, gone you away. did hear there that we go. API. You did. All right. I think I think I fixed that. Let's. Uh... It looks good. All right. So well, this was my. Mostly. Just this was just my. So, just so you know, like oh now it's. Oh, you, you've got re screen resolution issues because it's following your mouse. Man. All right. 
we'll, we'll see once we get into the instance we'll make sure that everybody yeah. can see code um <laughs> yes so we had a question will these videos be uploaded anyway any anywhere well they're, for better they stay or worse on YouTube. <laughs> yeah they're gonna go to youtube we, maybe we'll cut out some of uh, some of the issues uh anyway graphql uh so in the Paris release, we released this GraphQL API framework, uh, and you know the the main I think the main purpose of the GraphQL framework uh, is to work with uh, the now experienced components, and you know that's uh, that's what we do in the post here, and that's what we're going to eventually do on uh, <laughs> this stream or a stream uh, if we get there. So this post uh, was was really about setting up a, uh, a GraphQL endpoint and then consuming it uh, from a component. And the process of setting up the endpoint itself uh, was actually simpler than I thought it would be. Uh, I think once you get the hang of it, there's there's definitely less code than when you set up a scripted REST API. Um, but there are some some gotchas. Uh, so we will uh, we'll take a look at that a little bit. So I'm going to hop into an instance here, and how does that look? Oh, it's okay. Yeah, this was a completely random uh, time to start the stream, so that's uh, you know it, it's definitely not going to be con convenient for everyone. Um, yeah. I have this up on my iPad and the scrolling is kind of strange with this, but we are going to set up a new GraphQL API here uh, for my cooking management. So I actually have one that I set up for the blog that I wrote uh, for Incident. Hey, upside down, Andrew, I see you. It is not, it's, it's not the weekend for you, which is strange. <laughs> yeah, it's, on, it's only Friday in Australia right now. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to set up, uh, this is, we're just going to call this uh, cooking. So there's a couple of important fields when you set up a new GraphQL API. Uh, the schema namespace uh, is going to be important. And then the app namespace is going to be important. So whenever you... Um, whenever you build your GraphQL queries in your components or whatever system you're consuming GraphQL from, uh, those are the things that you will need to know and you'll need to include in your query. So it's, it's going to automatically add a namespace for me. If you're in the global scope, it's going to add some, some namespace for that global scope too, uh, which may be, it's, I think it's going to end up being your company code. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so I have that done. And then once we get into the schema here, uh, we've got some different things that gives us some stub code. Uh, this is all uh, a standard, I think it's just called this type and schema framework. Um, there's a GraphQL, I think I linked to it in the blog, let's see. Um, there is a standard for this. And here it is. I know because I wrote this part this morning. Yeah, so there's a standard uh, you can schemas. Remember that far back? Come yeah. on. I don't know. There's a believe. schemas and types. And if you click into it, uh, the GraphQL uh, documentation is pretty good. And it kind of tells you how all this stuff works. Um, but for our purposes here, uh, we are not gonna, we're just gonna do some querying to start. So we're not gonna do the mutation. So we have the, uh, the query here and I think we're gonna do, let's do find active cooks. And I don't remember what the uh, what the syntax is, so I'm going to check here. Find the active cooks. I like active cooks. I think active because there's not going to be more than one probably. So I don't know. We may not even pass it a parameter. Um, 
which I believe is okay. So here we have in my incident query, I am finding an incident by its ID, uh, but I believe we don't even need to do that if we don't want to. So I'm just gonna say find the active cook and what was that? So find it and then colon, and then we have to tell it what type we want it to use. And now I have to go back and remember what we have named all of the things in our cooking management app. I, th I think I'm just gonna call it cook. <laughs> so let's save mandatory fields. So this is, uh, this is, set to true by default. I, I'm not going to worry about ACLs. Um, Can't find type cook. Oh, I believe we need to then say type cook and then we need to tell it Let's see, what do we have in our incident? So we have, ah, mm. so for type Fields. query, we're saying, hey, there's an incident query. And then it's saying, hey, you told me there's an incident query, but you don't have an incident query type. Uh, so we do have an incident query type here. And I believe this type displayable thing is a fairly standard uh, thing we have here. So I'm gonna grab that and we will put it in there. So let's just take a couple of fields and I'm gonna do a shift tab and make everything happier. And we want, uh, let's grab sysid. And I think, what do we say? Displayable string, something like that. Yeah. We're confusing everybody. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I did at least go and update the uh, title because it, it did grab tomorrow's. Oh, okay. So I'll yeah, have to this is tomorrow's. This is a random one. We were like, let's do a live stream. So that's what we're doing. I have GraphQL on my mind. You know, I'm just going to leave it at uh, sysid for now because I don't remember any of the other fields. Ah, okay. <laughs> you know, we'll it's not that look. tricky to go to the cook table. <laughs> <laughs> I know. We're going to go look at it. Uh, here, let's let's save the cooking API and then go look at the cook table. It is Hacktoberfest, Phil. Um, yeah. Is is this a? Uh, uh, have you stored this in GitHub yet? It is in GitHub and it's public. Uh, I think it's it's under my GitHub, so it's like GitHub Brad Tilton now cooking dash management. I I believe is where this app is. So feel free to grab it and uh, <laughs> do do whatever you want with it. Um, so you, if you want, you can contribute to this one and, uh, we'll tag them, uh, for yep. Hacktoberfest. I'll get the URL and throw it in the chat. Nice. Yeah. So I, it's, let's grab that's what the a good sidekick number, does. <laughs> number, short description, description. Let's grab a few of those things. So... And there, you'll notice there's no commas here. This is a GraphQL, I don't even know what to call it. It's a GraphQL thing, uh, schema syntax uh, that we're using in here. And it has a name. It's like the GraphQL something. Maybe it tells us in the SDL. There we go. Look at our tooltips working. Uh, Phil is wondering what this app is. Yeah, so I was just typing it out. Um, oh, nice. 
yeah, yeah cooking a, cooking tracking so cooking tracking. i do I, I both andrew and i do a bit of uh, meat smoking with you know if you get these cuts of meat that are really fatty you want to smoke them over a really long period of time like 20 hours and when you do a it, cook like that you want to track how you did it because you don't really remember a 20 hour cook uh, so i have a wi-fi thermometer where anytime I do something in the app, it goes and grabs the current temps for my thermometer. So I can say, you know, every time I add a log or open the smoker or, you know, wrap something, it'll give me the temps. Um, so that is on some past live code happy hours. Um, so this is in preparation for doing some, uh, some UI work. Uh, we want to create a GraphQL API to hook into a component. Yes, eventually we will hook this into a component, maybe today. All right. You're overly ambitious for today. I can, I'm barely awake. So I can, this I is... can post links into a chat though. I'm, <laughs> hey, I'm still at that's... that level. I had to do I, it I from our, it. our master account because it doesn't let you from a uh, <laughs> person. <laughs> I, oh. I'm joining the chat with my regular Google account and it was like, nah. <laughs> it doesn't even tell you you can't. It just it just accepts it and absorbs it. Mm. It doesn't show it to anyone else. Andrew, I didn't even think so. Up to, upside down Andrew suggests that I write off the smoker on my tax returns. I hadn't even thought about it, but it's now something I'll be looking into. <laughs> All right, now that we've created the schema, we have to create some scripted resolvers. And these are like, can be really simple um, scripts here. So we basically just want to return a, a glide record. Okay. And I believe- I know how to get a glide record. <laughs> I don't think I have to do anything special. Oh, cause we are, we are not even, uh, we're not, we're just doing the active cook. Oh, so I want to I want to query for an active cook. So we'll say you don't use the macro. Uh, oh, you know I used to use the macro. I should. It's hilarious. I go through phases of yeah thing var gr tab and not. I had a, I had a, what well, on one instance I had created a, you know, like a better macro and then I used that and then it was gone. Um, yeah, me too. What do we think the, I'm going to say. And then when I was at customer and, you know, when I was working at, you know, pr the same instances all the time, um, I, I would always do it from the list view because I had a, create a script from this so it would prompt me for the mm. variable I wanted and then would put into my clipboard the pasteable glide record query for that, that nice. with yeah. my variable name. And that that was nice. And it and it also reminds people to you use the list view for, for building your queries. Because a bad query is very sad. Do we think that I extend? I think I did extend cooks from task. Uh, I did. It has an active field. Yeah. Do, do we use it? We do not. All right. <laughs> so state work in progress. We're going to have to mess with this. Um, let's set them all to. Uh, yeah. Well, they're closed. all done. So. Yeah. I am not currently smoking anything. Has. As sad as that statement is, I am not. So let's look for state is work in progress. Well, uh, did you, uh, you know, did you get automagic and there, there's now only one active one? Uh, I didn't. I just closed them. Uh, oh, that's a good question. Did they auto close? That's they did. That's what I was asking. And yay, task you're table. Victorious. Yay, task table. <laughs> there's right. some pains with working from task extension, <laughs> but there's also some joy. 
Um, <laughs> and then I think, do we return? Let's see what I do in the blog here. Return, I do do a return. All right. And so this is because you're, are you not sending over a society? You're just going to yeah. get the active one? Yeah, so this is probably like a terrible example if you want to use this as, as uh, something to go off of. The one on the blog is better. Uh, but really all I want is I just want the active cook. Uh, so whichever one is active, if there's multiple active, then, you know, maybe I'm then Maybe I have both actives. my yeah, both my smoker and my grill fired up. But man, that sounds fun. I should do that actually. Uh, <laughs> oh, I have to name this. I like uh, how that that's not a problem. That's excitement. <laughs> what if I've got two active cooks? That means I've got both. my grill and my smoker going. Let's do that. <laughs> yeah, my Wi-Fi thermometer has six channels and I don't have six probes. I think I only have like four, but that, that would be a great excuse to fill up all the channels. Um, I love the yes. excuses. So we have the cook here and then I let's do a, while we're, while we're here, I want to do a related, um, a related table and I think recipe is a good one for that okay. so let's make sure so we're gonna we're also going to return recipe and so when we do recipe is that right source I feel like the last time I did this it auto completed and that's not right uh, oh I need to give it a Oh, so we let's call it name recipe thing first. Yeah, and source. So recipe source, and then I need to let's just copy this thing. I right, and then I made the same say, joke in my head, Andrew, and I'm also a grown person. <laughs> I, it's always, I mean, the kids especially love uh, <laughs> when I cook a pork butt because we all get to have fun with it. Um, so recipe.value, and then I need to add a recipe type now because I'm now referencing another object type. Yeah. Recipe. And then for the recipe, what well, do we, we want? Server. The sys ID and the display name or just the Yeah, display, let's just the do name. the sys ID and the name. Playable string. I love a little copy oh. pasta. All right. And then I'm going to save this one to give me any messages. It does a bunch of parsing when you save this. And so sometimes you get some really fun messages, uh, which is fun as Why the term I'm going to use. Silly man. <laughs> That's right. And then we need a recipe resolver also. Um, so let's do it this time. Uh, recipe was and then um, What do we have? There we go. So since uh, I'm not really sure the <laughs> the real reason for this, but since uh, we're going to be referencing the recipe by sysid, this get source is going to give us the sysid of the uh, record being referenced here. Okay. Uh, that's, that's about all the, all the, uh, information I can give about it. <laughs> but, all uh, right. And this looks right. Those match. And so, so our cook 
record is returning our recipe sys ID. And the rest is the recipe sys ID is passing that along to this resolver. And this is getting anything extra I need, uh, which in this case will just be the name. Yes, that is correct. Uh, I cool. mean, technically, since we're grabbing the value and display value from all the fields, everything we, didn't I, we need might not to need do that. this, yeah. but we'll we'll want it later. So like, right as soon as right, we need a third field, that's right. We, we'll we won't need any more work other than adding it right here. We'll be so so happy that past us did this. Yeah, sometimes. You know, you got to help out future you. Not always, because right. that person, you know, has got to deal with what comes, <laughs> but sometimes help them out. So right now, this still does not work because we have to tell the GraphQL API uh, which parts of the schema connect to which of these resolvers. So that's where oh, we come into this resolver mapping. A little mappy map. All right. And it's pretty interesting. Uh, it it basically parses out that schema and then oh, yeah. gives us it some options. Clearly, here. has gone and grabbed all of those uh, and po populated them right here. Nice. So the important one for us is this query find active co cooks. So this is like the when I initially hit this GraphQL API the with first. the find active cooks. This is what we want to know here, and then we only have a couple of resolvers but that's gonna use the cook resolver. And that's all I have to do uh, for these mappings. It's really just a, you know, this is a regular many to many table. And then we wanna do another one. So any any time that we are referencing another type uh, from one of these types, it needs a resolver. So if I was referencing like five different reference fields in here, okay. I would need five different resolvers. And they might all use the same scripted resolvers. Um, even if they're the same. So if I have like uh, in oh, my wait, incident example, different? yeah. So like uh, caller and open caller and assignee incident. or would be yeah. You need different resolver they, mappings, but it could yeah, be you the need same different scripted resolver. Yes. Yeah. You're gonna reuse the same scripted resolver, but you need mappings for each. Cool. Uh, I didn't I can, know that. I, can I love show things. that. I was excited. I was I was plowing over you. I was like, "Oh, cool! <laughs> You're teaching me something, Brad. I love it." Uh, so love our cook recipe is going to use the recipe resolver. So that should be it for this one. I'll show. Let me show the incident one uh, that I have that I used for the um, for the it blog. Looks eerily post. like the blog. Yes. So this is what I use to write the blog post. Uh, and you can see we've got a few different types in here, problem, user, CMDB. Uh, and there's some of them have multiple. And then down in the resolver mappings, we've got um, like an incident open by uses the user resolver. Caller ID uses the user re resolver. And then if I wanted to, you know, reference user from problem, which I did here, problem open by also uses the user resolver. So there still is a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of reuse there. Um, nice. So that's it uh, for the API. Uh, at this point, it should work. Uh, and I think, uh, I think we'll try to make it work. Um, yeah. I, I love trying to make it work uh i did i don't even have uh, my the right vs code window open though so let's uh let me open a vs code and create a spot for this component and then we will scaffold a component and connect it i'm not doing this on the screen because i That's think fine. i'm gonna have to no i Put think i'll be good keys. I, I think I will be good, actually. Hey, you should so, already have auth done. You just need to cook. scaffold a new project, right? Yes. Well, that still takes a moment. So what he's doing, for those that haven't seen this before, is he's using the now CLI uh, to scaffold a new component project um, and then install its dependencies. Uh, 
Let's go over. I'm going to zoom in a couple of times here. Nice. And now we will scaffold oh, a new project. Fuzzy. Oh, there it is. Is it fuzzy? I just needed to refresh. I, I needed uh, to refresh my YouTube. So I, I had it in a background tab and it down, you know, browsers downgrade yep. when things aren't the, the front tab. So I'm going to scaffold this project. Uh, and I believe the only, well, let's see, let's. That'll, that'll get you when you're playing incremental games in your browser. <laughs> I wouldn't know yeah. anything about that though. Uh, so we have to give it a name that I think that's the only required uh, parameter here as we give it a name. Uh, and that's probably all I'm going to give it. Uh, you can create a, um, yeah, let's move this up a little bit. Right. You can give it, uh, you can create this offline. And the nice thing is uh, it won't connect to your instance first. So if you wanted to create it with, you know, a different scope for whatever reason, uh, you could uh, you could do that. Uh, but we're going to go now CLI project. And then the name is going to be, I'm going to use my initials. And then we're going to call it, what did I call this, Cook Query? Let's just call it that for now. Uh, the real purpose of this component is just to test our GraphQL query. Which we could have done with a. Uh... We could have done it with another one, yeah. Well, I was going to say we can do it. You can do it with the, uh, you know, third-party tools that will allow you to just initiate yes. a GraphQL query against an endpoint. So that's the, true. Part of what I wanted to do was man, etc. Yeah, was do our GraphQL effect. Um, it's uh, man, Tiberia sounds nice. It's it's Thomas actually. <laughs> uh, uh yeah so we'll do this he, he uh, said from the component. Again. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's nice oh wonderful thursday stream uh yeah so we'll do this from the component uh, i have sort of successfully used a uh, graphy ql which is I think it's an it, you can use it in in browser. I used it successfully at one point, and then I tried to use it recently and couldn't get it to work. And I'm sure there was some random, you know, little thing that I was missing. But uh, yeah. All right, so we're gonna let that scaffold here. Or no, we're installing dependencies. Um, I'm also going to import uh, this may even be what it's actually called. <laughs> the names are pretty uh, straightforward. Yeah, most for the most part, they make sense there. That, that's one of the nice things about a new thing is it, it doesn't yeah. have carryover names that are, you know, bad. Here, I'm going to open the other one that I was using and we can, we can reference that because I would, I mean, why would you build something from scratch multiple times? Right, so this is the one that I used on the blog. I will drag that over real quick here. Uh, I have to import create GraphQL effect, uh, but mm. I believe I did name this correctly. So I'll, I'll take the credit there, uh, whatever there is to give. Um, so let's do that. And then um, I'm just going to do a install the dependencies for the effect. And then I'm also going to steal our query for the component. 
and then we'll we'll come back in and fill everything in that we need to. So you just added in the action handlers that you built from your other component over to here, uh, and you'll adjust them as you need for this one. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah, which basically we haven't really done much. I do need to add the uh, component bootstrap. So component bootstrap is a lifecycle event mm -hmm. that it's it's pretty similar to uh, like DOM loaded uh, from prototype, which is what I always use. So it's once the component is uh, is done loading. No, I need the action types here. So, all right. Nice. Yeah, and those action types are really handy um, when you need to perform um, uh, any of those lifecycle actions uh, and, and monitoring them. So you don't have to create those. You, get, you just get to consume them, um, which is nice. Yeah. So... We don't even have a problem number. <laughs> so because we're just I getting the active to, cooks. <laughs> I want to fetch. Uh, we don't need to use the word graph cube. Let's just say fetch active cooks. Uh, I guess we should uh, prepare for it being multiple. Uh, and we are not going to have a variable list. Yeah. So I do need to specify the query at some point. Uh, but what I'll do is I'll leave, um, I'll leave this and we'll just, what I did for the blog was I was kind of lazy and I didn't actually parse our results. I just, uh, pasted the just, uh, JSON. Just, just JSON right into the component. That's right. Nice. So we're going to do that. Uh, so what do we call that? Payload, of course. All right. So we still need to define a query. So we'll just do that here. And we'll say, Query and then I think I'm going to borrow my query from my other window, which I put this in the constants file. File. Yeah. Okay. We we're just doing it in line here. In line. Because you only abstract when you need to. Yes. If All it right. gets too long, you need to break it down into pieces. But So here we have our query, and I don't need the ID here. So we can get rid of that. We have our app namespace. So if we go back and look at our query, we'll go to our app namespace, and then I think we called it cook, right? Cooking. And then the name of it was find active cooks. And then we will just be very simple and try to get something back at a name, right? Sys ID number short description. So let's do that. Sys ID 
number. Uh, short description. One of the things I appreciated about GraphQL, and I, I, you know, probably pretty obviously, if you watch this, uh, is that I'm I'm no GraphQL wizard. Uh, but one of the things I liked about it as I was learning it, uh, that should not be, is that the um, the structure and data that you get back from your query is the same uh, as the way you have structured your query. So I should get basically the same thing back, but with actual values here, uh, which is kind of nice. You can, uh, you have a little bit more that, control over. Yeah, that's the big, that's the big yeah. benefit over a, uh, like a scripted REST API is that those are very defined by the source on what you get back and how it's structured. Um, but with GraphQL, it is from the requester, it, they get to, to pick that. Yeah, yeah, so it's, it's very uh, dynamic. And then from our end in here, we can really open up a lot of uh, tables and, um, you know, you can open up a lot of tables, you can open up a lot of different queries within those tables and you only ever have this one endpoint. Uh, and, you know, you can make changes to it and add more things to it, but people that are consuming it don't necessarily have to make any changes because you're not changing what they're doing. So one, I think one of the big problems that GraphQL was created to fix was both endpoint sprawl and versioning. Uh, so, you know, every time you change the way the endpoint works, you create a new version and with GraphQL, like that, that whole process just doesn't happen as often. So it's possible that this could work right now. Um, I'm using, uh, Chuck's, uh, JSON stringify. I had no idea that you could do this and make your stringify look pretty. I learned while I was writing stringify and Chuck told me about it on a previous live code. Yeah, that was just last week. Um, but yeah, we've used it a few times on the show. I always forget about it. Uh, and then Chuck comes along and reminds me every six <laughs> or seven months. All right, so let's go ahead and develop this thing and maybe it'll work. So at some point it is, uh, it's building this, it's going to open up a tab. There it goes. <clears throat> and then hopefully we will not get a blank screen. We did not, <laughs> it worked. Look at that. So Whoa. this is our, uh, this is our I'm JSON object drink. that I'm, we got back. Everybody else uh, out there can too. That's pretty great. I mean, this is very similar to what I did uh, in the blog uh, that I wrote this week. So uh, it's, uh, it's something I've been doing. But you can see that the result we get back here uh, is this object. And it is uh, very, very close to the query that we sent, uh, except now we have values uh, for these properties in, in our little objects here. Yeah, and I think for the, you know, anybody who's watching, if anyone is watching, um, <laughs> a valuable thing to do real quick is add in another uh, field right here real quick yeah. that you want to, to see and show so, what you have to do in order to get that from the endpoint. Yeah, so right now we're grabbing the value of sysid number and short description, and then if we go back in here, we are also grabbing like recipe. So let's get the sysid and the name from the recipe table and uh, see how that works. So this uh, is something that's not completely uh, straightforward. Uh, so for recipe, uh, I'm telling it recipe and then I'm gonna say I want the sysid and we'll take the value of it. 
And then we want the name and let's take the display value. I haven't done that anywhere yet, uh, although they are gonna be the same. So if I save this and we go back over here, it should give me, yeah, so here's my recipe. And then from my recipe table, I've grabbed sys ID and name. Um, and if we wanted to say, so we have name is on there. Um, maybe we wanted uh, ingredients since I know that has some, uh, some data. So I could say, hey, we want ingredients. And that's a word that I don't want to type out. And then we could come in and say, let's also take ingredients here. Uh, and then if we come back over here, uh, we now have ingredients. So the display value Damn. is the uh, what we just added there. So I, I think once you get it, once you get the API set up initially, uh, it's really easy to add more, you know, more data about the table itself. And probably when you set it up, you're just going to add all the fields from the table. Um, but you can add more related tables uh, in those resolvers for GraphQL, you could do a little bit more coding and, and you know, get something that's more than just the sys ID of the related so, record. So for me, yeah. Brad, um, can you show me that the requester is asking for one of the things I'm not providing on the recipe table? Do you want me to try to grab a field that's not there? I want you to ask for a field that the provider isn't set up to provide yet. Ooh, all right. So I know that. Um, so you know that recipe description. is that description. So ask for a description. And we did not do description. Oh, and then we get an error. And it and it's even a useful error, which is yeah. hey, description isn't defined over in wow, it's pretty specific on where that's not. Line 24, column they, 11. They, they gave us a lot of information up? there. Oh, it's not quite uh which line I guess did it's it from say? our component. Line 24, column 11. Yeah. But yeah, that's a that's a good error, and uh, this errors object uh, exists all the time. We take this away, and then over in my oh no no, can we put it back, please? I can't. I'll put it. I, back. I wanted to show yeah, the the whole. My errors is still there. What was it? Description. Ooh, actually... well, you yanked it. You should paste it back. Yeah, there you go. Um, so now back in my instance, show me how to add that. So for description, all we're going to do is say description. And now next time I reload the component, it'll work? Yes. Wow. That's, that's some cool stuff right there. <laughs> That's pretty easy once you've gotten that close. Like, I, I'm a fan. Uh, yeah. So Phil asks if the line breaks are important on GraphQL. I don't know the actual answer to this, but having worked with it a little bit, it seems like the answer to this is yes. That line breaks are very important, based on no semicolons or anything. All right. Well, we went through everything that I wanted to go through here. Anybody have any uh, questions or something else they want to see us do? Let's 
still have a few people in the chat. You you did what I thought was cool, like. Yeah, so, so one of the nice things about this, and I, I think I did this in the blog, is you can add more queries to this too. So I could, you know, this is find active cooks. I have, uh, I have a thermometer table, uh, so I could find, you know, all of my thermometers, and then I could use, you know, these same, um, these, the same schema and resolvers to find those related values. So for, and I guess this is uh, helpful if we go in and look at this incident example. So for the incident, I have, uh, you know, I'm finding incidents by ID and I'm finding problems by ID. And because those have so many similar uh, fields and, you know, users and CMDB, I can reuse a lot of, I, I can reuse those resolvers. So I don't have to create, you know, new scripted resolvers. I really just have one for each table. And, you know, you may have one per table per, you know, operation you want to do on that table. Uh, if you had like a, you know, really advanced query you wanted to do that wasn't just grabbing the sys ID. Um, but I think one of the nice things about these GraphQL APIs is they scale really well. Um, could you do async things like check the temps in the query? Um, I think I could do that from my component. Um, you know, the API is just there to, to be consumed. So I guess the question is, is is a GraphQL um, API call from your component a thing that should do something other than give a response? Mm. Right? So that was genericizing the question a little bit and abstracting it. Because uh, what we've seen so far, and I... This is not a leading question because I don't know the answer to this question. Uh, this is a legit question that I have is, so because one of the many things that a scripted REST API can do and is intended to do is perform any arbitrary actions that you want. Um, and I just don't know if GraphQL is intended for that because I don't know enough about GraphQL. Yeah, <clears throat> so I'm showing this. Uh, there are two types um, in the schema. One is a query and one is a mutation type. And I have not messed with the mutation type. Um, and I believe that may let us do different things. But I also am not familiar enough with it to know that for sure exactly what that is. I know if you. If you set up a new one and we saw this, I actually uh, got rid of it when we looked at the cooking API. That's not how you spell graph. Um, it gives you the, yeah, both a mutation and a query type here. So I, yeah. I think and I just you don't know what the mutation type means. Things. Yeah, <laughs> that's uh, GraphQL part two. Uh, yeah, that's coming, GraphQL next week. Coming next, to your blog quote oh, next yeah. week. Wow. <laughs> that's, uh, that's I didn't commitment. specify, you know, when now is. <laughs> Sometime in the next decade. <laughs> so always Phil, a, that's, always that's kind of the week. question. I, I, I don't know the answer to that question, Phil, what if mutation yeah. is post. I, that's my that's what I suspect, but I don't know enough about GraphQL to know. So we are not doing GraphQL tomorrow. I think we're doing we're doing some service portal tomorrow. The throwback. A little throwback. Nothing All wrong right. with that. Still well, plenty of service portal out there in the world. Heck, there's plenty of CMS still out there in the world. What am I saying? <laughs> there is. <laughs> oh CMS! All right, that's where I, that's where switches. I cut my teeth on jelly. <laughs> we are no not components in portal. Just uh, we're going to do some widgets. All right, I'm going to switch us back to video to end this thing here. Wait, 
come back. Baby, come back. Now we're good. You can blame it all on Brad. Oh, my lighting's so control. terrible now. <laughs> you yeah. can't blame me for everything. <laughs> Turn my lights up. The, there we go. the lights uh, definitely have changed here since the, the last hour. Yeah, I've got my, the sun is like right there. So Yeah, yeah the sun is right there for me too. <laughs> is it? Is it really? No, mine's mine's an hour lower. It's right there. Mm. That's right. All right. Well, thanks everybody. Uh, we will be here at our normal time tomorrow, uh, complete with uh, Chuck, I believe, and we will be doing, uh, I believe, service portal uh, stuff on the show. But thanks for sticking <laughs> around with us. We did some GraphQL. You're driving, Brad. You, uh, you sound will, doubtful. Uh, I mean, I'm driving tomorrow. I have like 24 hours before I have to do that. You could tomorrow. change your mind. All right. That's true. I could change my mind. All right. I, I mean, that that live stream is 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 overwritten now, so it really could be anything. <laughs> we could do whatever we want. All right. We, we will do something want. tomorrow uh, around uh, around oh, at a 3.30 Central. I don't know what the rest of y'all's time zones are, but that's <laughs> 3.30 Central tomorrow. Thanks, nice, guys. Nice hanging out.